This is a regular scheduled meeting of the Franklin Township Environmental Commission in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act, PL 1975, Chapter 231, adequate notice of this meeting has been posted. Roll call. Marie Santiago Valentin. She's not logged in yet, right? But uh, she's coming. You need to unmute, Maria. Okay. I'm here. Okay, thank I'm you. I'm having trouble starting the video. That's all. I'm... Well, I'm... the meeting has already started. So. Okay. Uh, I can't. Uh, put it. Robin Sudan here. Okay, Arnold Smith here. Stan here. here. Walter Andrews, I'm here. Paul Walensky, I'm here. Ted Chase here. I can't start immediately. Uh, Jessica said that she would be late. I don't believe she's on yet. Is that right? That's right. Okay. I didn't miss anyone. Maria, you're on audibly, but you're just not on. Um, yeah, I'm trying. To, I'm visibly. clicking to start the video, but I don't. I it, it's not working for me on my end. I oh. have integrated camera. I'm clicking on the settings. Let's. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Well, okay. we hear your voice, okay. and that's okay. the most important I'm thing. I'm doing wrong. Got it. Now I have to change. Okay. To we'll give you one minute. Okay. And I saw my preview. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. I see my preview and then it says. So if you, yeah, if you wave your, cur your cursor over the bottom of the screen, you don't see an option to uh, join, uh, mute or unmute? Mm -hmm. That I saw and I saw the one too, uh, uh, that I can't. I want to put the video. Yeah, and, that's what you would. But it it was, the symbol of the, of the can of straight it. Okay, now it's working. There we there go. go. There we go. <laughs> Welcome. Thank All you right. for your patience. We, Sorry. No problem. We uh we just finished the um we just finished the hold on just a minute. Where where is my agenda? We're gonna have the um the minutes. Is that that's next one. Is there a chair report? Oh, you're right. Hold on. Yeah, chair report. Uh, you know, several of you have, uh, you know, come with items that you want to make sure that we put on a new business, and I will make sure we do that. Um, I think Paul has something. Um, Arnold has something, and and Stan, I believe Stan, we enter. I was able to put yours in the new business before I sent it out. I believe if you look at it, you will see that. That's the uh, adopt a, a stormwater drain program. Maybe maybe it's not that. Nevertheless, um, and also, how many of you receive your annual water drinking water quality report in your home mailbox? Yeah, I got yeah. mine. Yeah, I, I went through it, I and did. I think there's there are some items that maybe we want to discuss with with Mr. Hauk. There were several violations, and he's supposed to explain what has been done. I think he did, but you know whether there were any major health impacts or what have you. So maybe not at this meeting. You know, I know we get them uh, every year, and uh, we. Franklin Township gets this water from North Brunswick. I believe it gets it from uh, American Water Works, uh, and it has its own supply. And New Brunswick, yeah. yeah. And I, New Jersey American Water and New Brunswick, and I think we've stopped taking it from South Brunswick now. Okay. I think the Little Rocky uh, Hill, which is where it. The report still contained the uh, South Brunswick analysis. Yeah. Okay. I didn't did, yeah. South Brunswick analysis, but that's retrospective. Yeah. So Walter, maybe what we should do is put a list of questions together mm -hmm. and submit and submit them to Carl. Yeah. And 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 copy Bob Warnlocker and yeah. ask him to answer the questions or even hopefully he'd come up at our net to our next meeting yes. and discuss them 
that way. But either way, it would be nice to have the answers to those questions to yeah. be put in the in the public domain, so everybody, not just us, but everybody, can hear the answer to those questions. I think that's a great suggestion. So, um, you know, if, if you work with me and whoever else wants to join to get that list together, uh, you know, then we can send it forward maybe in about a week or so and uh, prepared, be prepared, hopefully to get a response or to get them to show up. Well, the other, the other thing was, uh, well, before you they, skip to the other thing, Walter, I, mm -hmm. I have not received the copy of that. Oh, um, so, I mean, you can send it to me if you'd like to, but in the meantime, what I would say is put your questions together so that we can yeah. see them and send them to us as well so that, Absolutely. you know, we don't duplicate questions um, and then we can work around whatever questions you have. And if we, the rest of us have any questions, we can add to those questions. Yeah. Yeah, and one question would be why you haven't received yours and I received mine. We're down the street from each other, you know, so that's a little strange. I haven't checked my mail today, so it's possibly oh, in today's okay. mail. Okay, all right, very good. But, uh, you know, um, in addition, uh, just real quickly, uh, South Brooklyn and I believe the other systems, they ran a number of tests, which I believe were required of everybody, but somehow Franklin Township did not run a couple of them. And, you know, I don't understand, you know, they certainly are receiving the water, but, you know, at one point I would believe that, um, well, all the all of the water systems are independent. They have their own ID. They have to do their own test. So does Franklin Township. They posted all that data, but they showed Franklin Township as being lacking. So that'll be one of my questions. So thank you, and we will work on that. Okay. So that's my chair report. <laughs> all right. I'm I'm still looking for my agenda that I have printed out. What's my like um, I moved to open to the public. Yes. Okay. I'll second, second that stand. No minutes. No minutes is next. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay. I received so my second. <laughs> so, sorry yeah the uh the minutes of our um june 7th meeting was you know taken by uh by ted and i sent them out to you and he sent them out to you so if if everybody's had a chance to look at them you know maybe we can get a motion to adopt them i'll make a motion to approve them as they are okay I second. I'll, I'll second. Okay, Ben, moving and second that the, the June 7th meeting, ECE WebEx meeting minutes be approved as they are. All in favor, let it be known by showing of your hands. Uh, Aye. 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 Okay, well, thank you and so Walter, much. Walter, I yes. will abstain because I wasn't there. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, one abstention. Okay, and uh, next would be the open to the public. So I motion. move to open to the public. And I will second that. I will move and second that we open to the public. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Okay, let's open to the public. Uh, Franklin reporter, you are on mute. I'm good, thanks very much. Thank All you right. for standing by with us. If you sure. would like to take a screenshot. Um... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hopefully we'll so that, uh, right motion, motion to close then. Motion to close. All right. Second. I'll give them a move and second, second that we close the meeting. All in favor, let it be number saying aye. 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 All who oppose, uh, say nay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it generally is handled by Jessica. And she said that she would be late uh, if she made it on. So why don't we we table that for now? I don't think see Jessica on, do you? No. no. Uh, and in review, uh, okay. I know I know uh, Paul, you were saying that the 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 Moss or Temple on on Middlesex uh, is coming up, and you wanted to make sure that. You know, you got a chance to resend your, your information to Woodbury. So just well, give us an update and talk okay, about. Okay, I um I looked at the planning board um 
agenda, and there wasn't anything current. Everything is now on the zoning board. And wow. um, there were three on the zoning board for July 1st. Uh, wow. One is the Sub Rose Inc., which is the parking of the 15 buses, which we talked about last meeting, yeah. and which we I wrote a note to Christine saying that there should be uh, no idling signs posted as per the DEP regulation, and that there should be no maintenance. My letter is not part of the posting for some reason, but the mm -hmm. TR. But I sent it to her like a day or three after the meeting. But okay. the, the TRC, in their review of the thing, said exactly th about no maintenance. So that's ah. in there already. But the no oh, idling, okay. I'm going to go back again to um, uh, to Christine and ask why that hadn't been posted. But somebody else picked up the no maintenance. The uh, the two temples on South Bedwell, South uh, Middlebush are also on the agenda for uh, September 1st. And it September does September or July. I mean, the, ju uh, July 1st. And and it does have um, the comments from the environmental commissions are posted as part of those packages. All of our comments. I I the last I saw, I'm not. I I I looked at it. You can pull up, pull it up, Andrew. The one uh, Arnold. It's uh, ZBA 19-00037. That's. The smaller one, that's the uh, the that's the man deer. No, I know, but we sent in comments. We did. We sent we in did. our first comments, yeah. and then after Diane and I we, went we to the comments. site, we yeah. sent more comments. We and I just wanted comments. to make sure that those comments were also a yeah. yeah. uh, part of what is what is part of the record. I can check again, but um, and I'll do that this week. I, I would appreciate that, and if they're okay. not, please resend them. Yes. So that they get them. Yeah, because I'm going to resend the one about the buses also. Because I okay. didn't show. I, I like to talk to Christine by email and see what's what's the story. There's sure. a third one and a fourth one on that meeting. Somebody just wants a side yard variance for an above the ground pool. And they had a picture of the backyard and it's grass at this point. There are no trees. Um, so they the above ground pool will um, get too close to the side boundary, which is why they're asking for a variance. There's, from an impervious service standpoint, um, I don't know what, what much we could talk about. It's not a, a permanent pool. It's a, you know, it's the above ground pools aren't a permanent structure. Okay. So that's that one. Now on the 715 meeting, there's um, a Trittany rehab on Route 27. They're just looking for a sign variance. The Cedar Hill Pre oh, the Cedar Hill uh, Preparatory withdrew its application for the track and soccer field. Ah, oh. and um, the Tabachnik one is listed for 715, and that does have our comments, uh, which we put in. I I did find those. Um, the um, the Saint Charbel uh, one uh, that's on that same date, and that's also our comments are there. Uh, then there's a new one, uh, Brentwood Bay. Um, it's a four-story building in Hamilton, and there's really no environmental. It just has to do with, um, oh, they just want to change the siding from from um, eight inch to seven inch. So it has nothing to do with the the building structure. That way, saving the 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 outside of the building, they want smaller. Um, thinner slats on the vinyl. So it's really not nothing that, that hits the environmental side. Okay. Oh, that one again for the minutes. That that was the last one is Brentwood Bay ZBA 00006 external building material. It's a four story building, 77 units, 51 bedrooms, 27 two bedrooms on Hamilton Street on Man and Persian. So they're switching from Harding board eight inch to certainty seven inch. And I wish we had Seal to answer this question. Maybe Ted can, but do they need to go to the zoning board for something I know. like that? I, it's an older. It was an older approval from nineteen, and they're just getting started. I don't again. So, but it was there. 
if if the eight inches was specifically stated in the zoning board's resolution, then they would have to go back to the zoning board to change it. Which is what I, that's what the discussion appeared to indicate. Yeah. Okay. Is it too late to say anything about solar on the roof or a cool roof? Or well, I, um, it's an apartment building and it, it's hard put to put um, solar on the roof unless the part of the community uh, pro program where um, um, uh, L L LG is supposed to be dedicating some of their um, uh, power toward those areas. Right. But, uh, a multi, it looks like it's got multi meters and it's very difficult from a solar standpoint. Maybe we but, could ask, is it a candidate for community solar? You know, if any, that's a possibility. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's about. a great, I think that's a yeah. great idea. Yeah. Um, because uh, they needed a variance to go to four stories. They, now imagine. it's been approved. It was approved back in 19. But, they needed, for, but they needed a variance to be approved, right? I mean, because I think the requirement, they were allowed up to three stories and to go to four stories, you need a, an, a, a variance. Which is so, probably what they did in 2000. Right, and that's that's the point. And I think what Robin is saying that just gives us another opportunity to say, "Hey, how about solar on the roof?" Could bring that up and see if did does anybody know was LG's um, application approved? And I they were I don't know they, that they were only one. There were several of them that Ted had told us about. Okay. Now whether and and right, we knew there were a lot more applications than those approved, but yeah. Um, it, I guess we could say to the town, if any of those in the town were approved, might one of them be a candidate for this roof? Maybe the letter should not go just to Christina, then to maybe to the board or to the zoning board itself. Uh, she's the funnel. Yeah. yeah, she's she's the funnel, right? Okay. But yes, that's, address it to the entire board. It may just help get them thinking along those lines. They may not okay. connect the dots. Right. Okay. I will. Uh, so that's the two I'll look at. Yep. This one and the uh, the um, temple on South Middle Bush. Ted is. And, that and our comments about the buses. Ted, is that understood that if uh, we send something to Christine Woodbury, that it automatically that it's known that this is going to go to the zoning board? It should be. Okay. Does, I don't know. Well, I'll bring it up. We'll you see can happens. address it to the board, care of Christine Woodbury. That would make it slightly stronger. Sure. I mean, I just I just do emails to Christine. I, to do the board, I've got to do the individual names, I think. No, I think you no? could address it to the whole board, care of Christine Woodbury. Oh, I can do that. Sure. To her by yeah, email. Yeah. Okay, I can do that. Okay. And it, so it that, is listed, Paul, on uh, the July 15th zone board? That's, um, yes. July 15th or July 1st? July 15th. Okay, the others were July 1st. Right, the the, the, uh, the temples and the buses and the, the house with the pool, those are July 1st. Right. So what we were discussing was the tab Tabachnik fine foods or? Yes, that was okay. that's the one that we put in a notice that they should consider uh, planting um, herbs and spices on the roof. I see. <laughs> the Bachnik Foods has also inquired of council uh, whether their plot can be rezoned. They're actually next. Uh, they border on the business and industry zone, but they're not in it. Uh, the is they want to get into the cannabis business. <laughs> That's interesting. There's brownies, maybe. <laughs> uh, they go well in soup, but I don't know. I mean, mainly they make soups in that place. I yeah. think. I think we should go inspect that site um, when it's <laughs> when it's finalized. All right. Very good. Okay, Paul. I that's very good. Oh, and okay, good. Because somebody's just ringing my bell. Okay. All right. All right. If we we follow the agenda, you know, under new business, 
why don't we uh, go with uh, the new business somehow that we didn't get on the written agenda? Uh, uh, maybe Walter, Jessica you want to go back. to Jessica first because we, we skipped oh, over yeah. Jessica. Jessica, the uh, what came in on the website? Uh, in the email? Yeah, I, I sent a couple of emails by mistake. Somehow I clicked on environmental commission and it automatically goes there. And I should, I have another name for the group. But uh, so you Wait, can. So, Walter, when you're, when you're typing in environmental commission, yeah, yeah. That goes to the environmental commission email. Um, can we, can we mute Paul? Because he's. Um, okay. Hey, I just did. All right. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, when you're typing in environmental commission, that's going to the environmental commission email. Oh. It's not necessarily going to the environmental commission as a group, right? Oh. You would have to actually create a group and add all of our email addresses for that to work. So well, I've been forwarding your emails um, as they come in to the group, yeah. uh, but there is nothing in the inbox right now. Oh, so. okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, and and Arnold, you had. Um, Something you wanted to uh, put in the minutes, I mean, to, for us to deal with and then part, become a part of the uh, meeting? Oh, well, the, you're talking about the, uh, I talked to you about the shade tree statement sent to uh, Christine Woodbury for the zoning board. Yeah. For the, for the proposed Dada Bhagwan Vignan Institute. Um, sure. Thank you, Walter. So, as the Environmental Commission's liaison to Shade Tree, I just wanted to update you on what Shade Tree submitted to, uh, in reference to their thoughts about the tree issue at the Data Bagwan Vignan Institute development proposal. Last week, we sent comments to the zoning board through Christine Woodbury, and I would like to read those comments to you and for the public to hear. So, we said, with all due respect, the Franklin Township and Shade Tree Commission encourages the zoning board to consider the following comments as they review the South Middle Bush Road Data Bagwan Vignan Institute development pro proposal. The Township Tree Removal Code, Chapter 222, applies throughout the township to, quote, preserve trees and woodlands from unjustifiable destruction, to preserve soil from erosion and sedimentation and to protect the use and transfer of topsoil, all for the general well-being of the residents of Franklin Township and neighboring downstream areas, end quote. While the code allows and regulates removal of trees in a proposed development to be offset by planting of replacement trees or when impractical by contribution to the township tree fund, the stated intent of the code is to ensure maximum tree preservation in the township. The township's intent to preserve its valuable tree canopy cover is further indicated by adoption of a 2016 proclamation to preserve the township's then existing tree canopy and to make every effort to increase that canopy by 3%. Further, by its nature, as a mature forested parcel, the significant canopied acreage provides a myriad of natural benefits that include preventing erosion of precious topsoil, moderating temperatures, cleaning the air, sequestering carbon, producing oxygen, improving our township's view, set, view shed, and providing habitat for wildlife. Franklin Township is a tree city USA, and every year the council reinforces the value of trees in our community through our annual Arbor Day proclamation where these assets are restated and our trees benefits to the township are reaffirmed. We understand that the Data Bagwan Vignan Institute's proposal involves clear cutting a dense stand up to 12 acres of old forest, which is counter to the intent of the above stated code and proclamation. We also understand that the area to be developed has an, air, an already cleared portion. The Franklin Township Shade Tree Commission strongly encourages the site plan be revised to utilize this existing unsecured area for building while retaining the mature forested area as an asset for our community. Thank you for your consideration and for your part in protecting and preserving the valuable tree canopy of Franklin Township. 
on behalf of the Franklin Township Shade Tree Commission, Chris Williams, Chair. So actually, overall, I believe this is a, a strong statement comparable to what the Environmental Commission submitted, but I'm not completely happy with this because in the last draft that I saw that was supposed to be sent out, it had a sense that discussed the townships and master plan and how it defines scenic corridors in part as areas that are visible from scenic roadways. They may exhibit mature woodlands and tense, tr dense tree stands. And obviously taking down these trees would go against what the master plan states. The draft also said that if the zoning board had any questions, we shade tree members would be happy to attend any of their meetings at their invitation to answer any questions they had. But it only said in the cover email from Chris Williams, our chair, that if Christine Woodbury had any questions, she should call him. But she isn't the person that should be asking the questions. It would be the zoning board and the applicant that would be asking the questions. So we have a shade tree meeting this Thursday, and hopefully we can rectify some of this. Um, anyway, thank you, Walter, for letting me get this on the record for the commission and the public to hear. All Thanks. right, thank you. Uh, Arne, if I might, Arnie, you know, I've been working on comparing tree ordinances, and so I've been deep into Franklin's. And if you'll permit me to share my screen, um, I will share with you the exemptions yes, that they may be me, able to get away with. Uh, make presenter. Yes, you can now share. Okay. Thank you. Let me find it. That will be it. So under exemptions in our current shade tree ordinance, this is something that I've already flagged as something that I think needs revision. It says that an exempt exempt from the provision that you uh, for some reason we don't see really. I mean, I don't see the. I see a black. I don't screen. see it on my screen. Yeah. I don't black see screen. It. You're not seeing it. Okay, no, bear just, with me a, a moment. Let me just see. Just a if black I screen. Do you have two screens? Uh, probably, and okay, let me try this again. Bear with me. You might be sharing the other one. Um. We see the mouse moving. Okay, let me, I'm going to try to get it more fully. Right now, I, you're all in a tiny little box and I can't. All right, just listen to me if you would then. Under exemptions, any tree on attractive land, oh, 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 I apologize, already in use by a church, nonprofit, or other public or quasi public organization. When the removal of said tree will be for a purpose in landscaping or to facilitate the program of said church camp or organization. So, if they own the land already, I don't know if that'll be considered land already in use, but just be aware of that Arnie. They may have that loophole to go through. I, I really don't understand what that. Can you explain that loophole or be a little bit more specific? I'm not sure if Reading I understand it exactly it. under exemptions. Those that are exempt from the regulation that says you cannot damage, remove, or destroy by cutting, girdling, bulldozing, grading of land, or otherwise uh, without first having, uh, getting a removal permit. And, mm -hmm. and the not-for-profits and churches or other quasi-public organizations are exempt from having to get a tree removal permit, which I think would allow them to do what they want. It would depend on the definition of land already in use. Well, I, I guess I, I think everything that we have we have put forward and what Shade Tree has now put forward are is just information for the zoning board to take into consideration yes. with all of the variances that they are asking for. So I just all, shared every, everything has to be taken in total, you know, including what you just said. Um, so, you know, we can only make our comments and then they have the final say in what it is that's going to be done. Yeah, I just 
I just brought that to your attention because it's sure. under an exemption. It might be an <laughs> argument that you see something it, comes. What, can, what is, can you, uh, which uh, letter is that? It's 222-4 exemptions. Which one is it? It is B, right here. Well, well, the, well the church I, hasn't been built yet. So right, how is, but do they own the property? I, mm -hmm. I, I mentioned that. Uh -huh, or already probably. in use. So just be aware of it. I only bring it up as an awareness. Well, okay. I would interpret it as being already in use. Already in use is like if you want to cut down a tree next to the six mile run reformed church. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I just point that out as a being a paragraph in our existing tree ordinance. Okay, good. Thanks for pointing that out. Okay, and, and um, this regulation, sorry, I'm curious, this, uh, this uh, exemption is written by a township or by state or who? I don't know, but it's in the townships tree ordinance. Okay, and so, it so it's written by us because if it, yes, you know, council can change it, you know, it's not in the 3 or 4 other ordinances I reviewed. Other yeah. municipal ordinances, I think I mean, we even, can... even if it could be changed Stan. Anything, you know, they have their application and so their application would be based on whatever the ordinance says now. Right. But it's okay, a beautiful, but for it's the a future. Beautiful, it's a beautiful letter, Arnie, and I hope it gets worthy the, atten the attention it deserves. Hopefully too. Thanks, Robin. Okay. All right. If we, if we move right along into uh, new business. Uh, the clean communities grant a recommendation for funding reusable bags. I know we did send something forward. I don't know what the current status of things are. If anybody knows, was well, that one that was not the one that the mayor recommended go to council, but the we don't know what happened. The letter went into a dark hole, and we haven't heard. What letter? What, what letter is this? Is this the one about recommending that part of the funding from the Clean Communities Grant be used to uh, fund um, reusable bags for Franklin Day and Fourth of July? Well, Ted, I guess I guess Ted might have heard. If anybody, Ted would have heard something about that. Okay. I All have. Right. Not... All we, right. We had a very brief caucus Sunday night, and which wow mainly had to do with uh, when we will have to resume uh, in-person in -person meetings and okay. the latest opinion from our attorney is not till September so we're it's very we're, conservative for July at least we're going to stay remote okay and the the principal concern at least is said by the mayor is that um, if the zoning board meeting on the uh, the temples were to be in person <laughs> that is likely very social crowded and could not be observed in the council chamber all right <laughs> okay good but, but at least we we have that uh, in the mix if you want to call it that and uh, the EC webpage subcommittee is ongoing. I don't know what the latest update of that is. Who is that, Robin? Or, or, or well, we, we have asked people to please test drive the website. Has anybody yeah. gone there and played around with it and tried to be a member of the public? We it really. Is. It was good. Okay. But if everybody else could spend 10 minutes, find. You get simple things like find links that don't work or things that are not intuitive or something that says, here's where you'll find X, Y, Z information and you go there and it's ABC information. It, it, or even if you find something that seems like it just doesn't make sense where it's put or, you know, just really critique it. We need you to be critical in a constructive manner so we can improve it. Yeah, at the last meeting we Robin had left word that you know we should 
spread the word and and you know so since last meeting hopefully we have all known that we we should be doing it whether we've done it or not i don't know but again you you're being asked by robin to do a test run on it and for very see what you can find mm -hmm. okay if we move along here i guess the next is the uh, checklist audience i robin i did see what you had put together and so i'll, I'll let you take this yeah um I, I took what ANJEC created as a basic internal checklist that an EC would use. Nothing that requires an ordinance. We're starting baby, baby steps. And their checklist, they made it fit on one page. There's a lot of information on there. I did delete at least two, just two items that I felt didn't apply to us. One had to do with the presence of limestone. The other had to do with dunes. And then I added some things that I thought we would like to be talking about, so we might be able to add them as comments. Things about energy and trees and uh, public transportation. So uh, I'd really appreciate it if if it's worthy enough that you guys take a look at it. We don't have to do it tonight. Offer some critique, and maybe it becomes a standard thing that Paul can use and we can use when we're going through plans. And we want to send some comments on to the technical review committee or to the the, the boards themselves. But um, there are many municipalities in New Jersey now that are using these, mm -hmm. and many of them are using them by requiring the applicant to complete them. So when an EC goes to look at plans, they already have the answers to the things that concern them. So you don't start this long process of now we ask and when do we get a response and when does it go up for a vote and do we have enough time? So if we can use this baby list I created for our own purposes and we test drive it internally, it might be something that we then oh, this is farm I have. Yeah. Thank you. Then oh, we, we can go on and talk about maybe making it a requirement and mark has responded to this in, in his email that we could make it a requirement by pass, uh, proposing an ordinance and asking the council to uh, pass the ordinance that would require applicants to address these kinds of questions up front. Some of the checklists used by municipalities you saw have pages of questions, and a lot of them are NA, NA, NA. This is a, a real distillation down to the very basics to help prompt us to ask about these things. And if you think some of them are things we would never ask in a million years anyway, let's take it off and make it easier to work with. So we don't need to do that tonight, but if, if you could along with test driving the website, take a stab at this and say, yeah, this makes sense. Or, or what if we added this point or that point, the kind of things that we find we're discussing. I'm sorry, Paul isn't here. This would be right up his alley, but. I like the proactive steps for climate and energy. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just I'm, curious I'm about- here, Robin. I'm curious Robin, about I'm here. that, okay. Robin. I'm curious about that under proactive steps where it says A and then B and you say energy, solar panels, geothermal, wind turbines, a cool roof. Are you, what is the question that's being asked? Are, are they, is that, it says solar panels. Does that mean, are you installing them or yeah. what is it? It, it the, It's to prompt us saying, gee, is this a building or a project that would be good for solar panels? Let's put that in our comment. Geothermal. Oh, okay. So oh. this is not this is not to be sent to them. No, it's, this is okay. our gotcha. internal use. So when gotcha. we create okay. our comments, because we might just forget sometime. We get busy focused on the trees and we never ask about the who knows what. By oh, having a checklist, it could help us be more thorough and be the same every time. Robin, I have two questions or comments on mm -hmm. the transportation practices. Stan, mm -hmm. I think, would love to have number four say electric charging. Yes, oh, exactly. yeah, yes, I'll and I'll not on yes, uh, preparedness, which means yeah. uh, uh, some, put, some, some wording for charging stations, pre wiring, yeah. or or 
or deliberately installing charging stations. Yes, yeah. correct. The, right. the, the other question I have is something that I haven't talked about with anybody, but I see in number four, you've got wind turbines. Yep. I'm okay. working on a possible installation in Nova Scotia for a, a 7 kW wind turbine that will grid feed as well as power a house on the on a cliff in Nova Scotia. Beautiful, beautiful. And those are those small. are small ones. They're not horizontal. They're vertical. Right. Oh. Yeah, I've seen plans for such, even just for individual houses. Yes. Yeah. The question is whether we have enough wind, enough of the time to make it worthwhile here. And, and we might not find it appropriate to bring up for 99% of what we see, but right. there might be one yeah. where we do think it's appropriate. I, Ted's, I, Ted's exactly right. The, the wind uh, is an extremely important and they have minimums uh, of the wind in the area. And if you don't get that, then you don't put up a wind turbine. Right. Okay, the studies Robin, that I've I, seen. Go ahead, Ted. I I looked it over a little more than quickly. One comment I have is that I think to do this thoroughly, we'd have to have members assigned to review applications before the meeting to fill this out. Otherwise, it might make the meetings very long and we'd spend a lot of time just filling out the the form if we have a number of applications to look at. I agree. And and we have in the past divvied up the applications among different members. We've Simply, usually done it just on the spot. Right. But I've gotten emails from Paul, I think, or Walter yeah. previously where we've been assigned yeah, we, before the meeting. When we went digital, yeah, we did do that. Yeah. 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 And, uh, if, if you so. might re you might remember also when Jessica and I worked on structural organizational issues for this commission, we had talked about creating a subcommittee just for plan review. Mm -hmm. So that there were maybe a couple of people who were dedicated to that and we didn't pull in a lot of different directions. So they would have that kind of time and we would it would be understood somebody's digging in deeply. So I completely agree, Ted. The other comment I'd have is one item there is the stormwater calculations. I don't, I, I, I can't swear that they are not in the plans as submitted, but I rather doubt it. I think they probably just go to the township engineer. Yeah, yeah. And it, and you might remember. You might remember in my email to you, I said a lot of this could be handled by engineering already. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's, could, that's, Dan, that's, could you go to page one for me for a minute? Oh, uh, are you talking to me? Yes. Oh, could you just go up to the sorry. first page for a minute? Yeah. So stormwater management. This does not specifically say calculations no that's not i agree uh it's it's, it's 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 g on the left hand side stormwater calculations okay that's what i was referring yeah. to mm -hmm. and, you know and if, if, i comment that uh, these uh you've got dnr canal commission there dnr canal commission normally does not approve a plan until after the municipal ap approval, but they okay. may have reviewed it and we may have comments from them or we may not. And is it possible that we could request that it be sent to them in advance for comments before final approval? It usually is, I think. It's okay. a question of whether we, the township, have received their comments. Yeah. So I think having it there just prompts us to ask what their comments were. Yeah. 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 yeah it's a sort of uh, are there comments from? Yeah. And I don't know if we ever see any reference to the state development and redevelopment plan. I'm not sure there is one at present. Hmm. Should I delete that? 
Yeah. Um, I mean, long ago, there was a state plan, but I think that was sometime before the Christie administration and it didn't survive that. Um, and in any case, I don't think I've ever seen an application make reference to it. Uh, well, it must be applicable in some municipalities because ANJAC put this together, so. Well, yeah, well, there could be things uh, uh, yeah, that would come up, but. Maybe some of the shore areas where they're protected things. Uh, maybe the, you know, the highlands, places like that. Well, and if something is a, a formal redevelopment application, then its relationship to state redevelopment would be worth exploring. But well, we have a redevelopment zone. Okay. Well, if if everybody is comfortable, I'll make that addition uh, about EV charging station preparedness, and then. Yeah, we could hopefully start to use this when we're looking at plans. If, mm. if the commission and Walter agree, it's probably a good idea to divvy up the plan so we can take time to use the checklist. Um, I, I just worked on this to develop a tool that possibly could be helpful. I'm not about to tell how we're going to use it. I leave that to the commission. Oh, great job, Robin. So. <laughs> Do we want to say uh, with these minor changes that we want to begin using it before the next meeting? Walter, I, I personally have not really had an opportunity okay. to review the full thing. I, I'd like to have a little bit more time to review it. All right. Um, mm -hmm. And if Robin is going to make some minor changes to it, if if she could send that to us, I think that would be great. That's just that's just my two cents. Okay, I'll resend in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. All right, but we're almost there. Um, and, and you know, the question Mark suggests that certainly we can't send this to the applicant, but we can ask for an ordinance where it could be sent. Right. I assume that that's a sort of a moot uh, thing. We don't necessarily want to go that way. Not I, not yet. This is training wheels. You know, oh, we find yeah. this is really helpful for us. Yeah. And yeah. if we had a form that the applicant had to complete, so it would short circuit the back and forth, I think that could be something that would be worthy of an ordinance. And it may become more worthy of consideration with this new mandate about the master plan having to take climate change into effect. All right. That, that the the different boards may realize they have to be much more climate focused. And if that's the case, it could help prepare the ground for passing an ordinance. Okay. Sorry, I'm sharing screen of uh, we were talking about the wind. Yes. On shore. So we are in the yellow zone. We have about five, five point five meters per second. Versus... I'm curious about this, Stan, because uh, the studies that I've heard about or read about indicate that there's very few, if any, on land areas um, in New Jersey that would be good for um, wind. wind turbines. Oh, yeah. And I can't really read the numbers on the in the right there as to how high up it goes. I see blue goes up to like greater than 10.5. Is that miles Me per hour? No, it's uh, meters per second. Meters per second. Um, and so for um, um, a turbine to be effective, be about 20, how high does 20. it have to go? Uh, so this is at 80 meters, you know. So there's actually nowhere in, in New Jersey, it looks like that. Up in the air, I guess. The, the, the minimum for the vertical access small turbines is 4.8. Anything uh, above 4.8 becomes viable. 4.8 and under is not viable. Meters per second? Yeah. 
I think, so, yeah, it wasn't meters. It was, uh, it was, yeah, I think it was meters. Can, can I share with you a very, very modest version of this? We put in at Saddam farms. We took down our old windmill. We put up a new windmill simply to power a bubbler in the pond. And it is the only one in the state of New Jersey. Apparently my brother met the manufacturers of this out at Iowa. And at a farm bureau thing and bought it very reasonably. And instead of running fountains, which we have, which cost something like $40 an hour to run the fountains, this bubbler reduces the duckweed and algae and helps keep the pond open and viable. And we don't spend any energy on it. It's from, it looks like an old fashioned farm windmill. Uh -huh. But it is a very mini, mini wind turbine to, to solve one function, but it creates enough energy to run that bubbler. That's for hmm. aeration? Yep. Wow. Because of that, it's the pond, Interesting. pond will fill in with duckweed and other things and right. um, to keep it viable. We have a stream coming in and a stream going out, but nevertheless, and it's a, I don't know how big the pond is. Does it operate directly pump or it generates electricity and the electricity then operates the pump? I don't know. I suspect it's the former, not the latter, Stan, but I'd have mm -hmm. to check with my brother. Okay. But if if we have an applicant that's putting in a water feature, it might be something that we could suggest. Yeah. Rather than running electricity to run fountains. Well, like mm -hmm. the detention ponds or retention ponds, I always forget which is which. The ones that always have water in them, and some of them have um, aeration systems in them um, that are probably run by electricity and if they can be run by something like this somebody's mm. going to save some money on it yeah. the, 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 the the major application i've heard of for these vertical access ones are up in the first nation areas in northern canada and on the amish farms where they want to be off the grid those those two areas the first wow. nation people use diesel and it's costing them like two dollars a kilowatt hour so the wind turbine is costing them 35 cents a kilowatt hour, and they're thrilled. <laughs> wow. Okay. It'd be interesting to know a little more about that, but uh, that's something we can all research for ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Robin, I make you presenter. Do you want to show any of those pictures of your wind turbine, or? When I have, I have you one are or two. You are muted. I'm not muted. Stan, I, I, I'm, I'm not prepared with any pictures, but I can no. get some for next time. Okay, yeah. good. Okay. Mm. Very good. All right. Um, if we move along, um, the Shade Tree Environmental Joint Subcommittee update. I, I don't know, have we already covered that? Uh, we haven't that I'm aware of, and I don't have anything to bring to the party right now. Okay. All right. Um, I can, Ted, Ted, I can just say that we are meeting on tomorrow at 10 o'clock. This joint group and, uh, oh. Oh. Well, okay. I've, I've done a fair amount of work comparing four different shade tree organizations and something where there might be things that help the environmental commission. If we could strengthen the shade tree ordinance, so we're meeting tomorrow and maybe they'll have something good to report later in July. Wonderful. Okay. Now we go down to see uh, volunteer opportunities with the environmental commission update. Uh, Stan, uh, that falls in your, your area. Right. Uh, not, so no, so not all of them, but <laughs> you have well, the active project. Here. Yes, and you, we have two bullet points in one uh, agenda here. So I will take the liberty and convert one of the points into uh, another bullet that uh, is not listed, but uh, let's do it later. So okay. regarding the volunteering program for uh, the Rutgers Prep School, um, uh, Chris Wright, he's uh, the student, he, he made survey, he has about 50 students uh, interested in a cleanup here and there. Um, 
So uh, right now we are just uh, looking to find a, a date when we are going to do a, a tow path cleanup. And um, uh, when uh, we have, excuse me, the date, I'll let everybody know whoever wants to join us. I'm going to give uh, the students uh, overview about the uh, importance of stream cleanup, about uh, storm water management, uh, why do we want to keep uh, our environment clean, and uh, I will also gauge on their continuous interest to uh, visit some other parks as per our conversation previously, which includes uh, smaller or larger township parks. End of. Uh, report. Yeah, if we go to other parks, we'll have have to go back to Bob Vaughan Walker. Okay, right. it will be in the loop. But shouldn't be a problem. All right. Very good. And and the part that um, has to do with um, I'm sorry, I, I've forgotten uh, the young lady's name from Rutgers, but. You know, that sort of interwine with whatever Bob Bornlocker has in the budget. And along with that, we asked, or at least I asked Anjack if they could provide us with a sustainability officer PD, a position description, so we can have an idea of what they visualize it and uh, Visualize one should look like, and if we get that, um, we'll be more prepared to engage in any discussion uh, that Bob may. Yeah. Now the it it's in the agenda for tomorrow night's meeting. Ah. Award NFO alternate contract to Kenyan Planning LLC Sustainability Consulting Services. It doesn't. Mm. It doesn't get um, terribly specific, but it says our Kenyan planning, etc., are very familiar with the goals, responsibilities, and work plan of the Environmental Commission and Green Team, and has expertise as it relates to municipal land use law, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Wow. So. And that's that's tomorrow night's meeting. That's a public meeting, huh? Yeah, it's in the consent agenda. Okay, very good. All right, that's good to know. All right. Um, now, if we move along to Franklin Warehouse, the idling of motor vehicles, uh, you know, stop the uh, soot org, et cetera. Um, on a, What's the latest on that? Oh. Well, again, this is in the hands of the council, and it's in, in my understanding that it's with some committee in the council, and Ted might be able to update us on something about that. I have no further update. As just as I mentioned, I think at the last meeting, I was copied on an email from the mayor to Bob Vornlocker asking that it be put on the agenda of the administration committee. So, which I would call an endorsement, but uh, it hasn't surfaced yet uh, as an okay. offense or anything. Now, um, was it Robin, you shared with us something from the Farm Bureau um, newsletter where I guess- It was not a, it was not a newsletter, it was okay. a- <laughs> uh, it was a draft of an editorial that Sweeney is going to be posting. Okay. I just did a quick check online. I don't see it there yet. Uh -huh. In it, he makes reference to legislation that is in the works in Trenton that would help control the warehouse sprawl. Yeah. So I'm I'm sh I'm sure I will hear more about it through my brother. But if any of us see any reference to this, it sounds like something we'd want to get behind. Yeah, if we if we like the details, so I was I was encouraged that people are concerned as well, not just us. All right. Very good. There was one article about requiring warehouses to be solar ready. 
That I think I forwarded this to somebody. Yeah. yeah. I believe that was out of one of Bob Smith's committees, I believe, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Not the specifics of it. Okay. All right. And, and just sort of a um, a sidebar, you know, I I share with you guys that I picked up a copy of the history of Franklin Township, and it has a, a it goes way back with the agricultural history of the township, you know, and um, so I'm I'm very curious as to. Um, Point I, I guess I wanted to make was that historically, uh, certain things uh, and thinking were controlled by, I'll call it the farmers or the farmers organization, and I, I don't know how, how that has carried through to today. I'm I'm just very curious, but that book has a lot of information in it, and uh, you know if anybody has a chance to go through it, I think you'll find it very interesting. That's my point. Thank you. And we and we do have an ag commission in Franklin. All right. It is okay, part of our governance. Um, if Walter, if I may take the floor for just a second, I just did a search on the internet, and today in the Star Ledger, in a move to revive the controversial measure, a state senate committee approved a bill on Thursday that aims to curb warehouse sprawl by requiring municipalities to seek the approval of neighboring towns before clearing the way for such projects. Ah. So it came out of a budget and appropriations voted eight to two with two abstentions. Um, so it's it's just requiring a notice to a, um, neighboring towns, but it's a start. Yeah. I think it makes lots of sense because the traffic uh, of yep. the townships are impacted. Yeah. So it still has to go through the uh, um, assembly. Yes, and it, it has to go out to the Senate. It just came out of committee. It goes oh, okay. on further to say the unexpected move on the bill, co-sponsored by Senate President Steve Sweeney, comes a week after it was withdrawn from another Senate committee over objections it could stifle job growth at a time many cities need it most. But the bill aims to get regional buy-in for warehouse projects whose recent proliferation has sparked strong community opposition in some places amid fears of a surge in truck traffic and an intrusion on the state's dwindling public space by the giant buildings. And, and, and it goes on, but it's today's Star Ledger. Um, I'd be happy to send everybody the link. The, the job yes. uh, argument is invalid because it's essentially uh, dragging jobs from one town to another. So. <laughs> well, that's true of so a lot of projects. I, I agree. Yeah. All right. So um, we have a live one there. And if we move along to the next one, is the plastic ban education subcommittee. Um, let me just start off real quickly that, you know, I, I contacted um, Bob McQueen, you know, asking him what social media uh, platform do we use? And I'm trying to remember, Zach, like I know he said Facebook and Twitter, but I thought that might have been the third one. It's not as many as uh, there were listed in the Franklin Times some years ago. But um, at the same time, I learned that uh, uh, Safi has sent out a request for input for the next newsletter, and I had missed that. So apparently it is alive and well, and uh, now they're asking for input. And I, I believe Stan said that he had something that he thought would be worthy. And uh, so that's where we are, at least for me. I don't know if uh, Maria or, or, or Robin have anything to add. Go ahead. Well, Maria's the chair. I think Maria should speak. Yeah. Okay. Where's Maria? Okay. I was trying to mute myself, it's a pain in my computer. So, okay. um, yes, I made a, my assignment was to, con to contact the Franklin Board of Ed and the Public Library, Franklin Public Library, and I received responses. Um, once I reached out to um, the Board of Education, um, the Office of the Curriculum Instruction, and I was directed to contact the public relations director and their answer was very positive. 
and they will distribute because they are mandated to distribute as uh, public schools any information flyer um, to, to the to, you know to, with the students from nonprofit organizations and of course uh, township information um, from the angle of the from the angle of the curriculum the office of the curriculum they're going to get back to me because they would like to engage the science teachers um, I ask if they had um, material for youth or children, and they didn't have any answer for me at that moment. They, I, they told me they, to reach out again in July for more information because Dr. Lang, my God, Lockhorn is going to look into this. Uh, it was the first time I think they were hearing uh, from, from the town or from us. Then at the public library, they, um, they offered us a space uh, to publicize, to distribute in hard copies and digital, and also on their website on digitally, any information uh, about the campaign. And um, I went a little bit further because in our meeting, it was brainstormed, but it was not really um, as, as it, it, it determined the decision. Uh, if Franklin, uh, the Environmental Commission would like to have info sessions, brief sessions, events at the public library. And um, they're open to that, uh, but this is something that the commission has to decide if they want to go that route to partner with the public library and determine the, you know, the time and who will be the facilitator if the commission is interested in going in that route. And I don't know if I'm missing anything else. I think I think Maria, because our last meeting we all had homework to come back to the subcommittee. I think we just wait till we've all turned our homework into the subcommittee, and then mm -hmm. we can make a recommendation to the commission. I think it's okay. a little early for us to do that. Okay. I think we can just assure everybody that we're gathering information, and we will come back with a recommendation. Okay. All right. Well, that's what Thank I have you. to say from my end then. All right. Very good. Mm -hmm. All right. And, you know, in, in my estimation, real quickly, I think somewhere along the line, we should develop a timeline for ourselves uh, to sort of keep us, you know, on track or, or let us know where we're going. But that's something we can do a little later. That's okay. committee. That's committee work. Yeah. The committee. Okay. All right. Uh, if if we if if we finish that one, then we can go to the uh, adopt a stormwater drain program that uh, Stan has um, mentioned. Stan, you want to lead us into that? Where's Stan? Oh, here we are. Stan, you're okay. Okay. So, so this is what you're proposing for the uh, newsletter and, and the website. Where is it? Somehow, Stan, oh. we, you're not coming through, Stan. I, we see your screen. How about now? Okay, now we do. Oh my goodness, yeah, this the, device the is cross. confusing. Okay. <laughs> um, so I say it again. Um, so this is what I sent uh, to everyone and now I would like to read it uh, publicly. Uh, this is the text that I suggest to be posted on social media for uh, our residents to interact. Excuse me. Quotation. Environmental Commission is invited is inviting Franklin Township residents to join ADAPT a drain program. What is it and why is it important? The climate change is increasing the incidence of heavy rains. Storm water should ideally soak into the soil, filter through and gradually enter our waterways. Unfortunately, due to impervious coverage, particularly in urban areas, storm water runs on the surface 
taking chemicals, trash, leaves, and pet excrements, sickening our communities and causing floods. Storm drains flow directly to local lakes, rivers, and wetlands, acting as a conduit for trash and organic pollutants. This is where the voluntary adopt a drain program begins. The program asks residents to adopt a storm drain in their neighborhood and keep it clear of leaves, trash, and other debris to reduce water pollution. Volunteer 15 minutes twice a month for cleaner waterways and healthier communities. It is a statewide program and you will be accounted for via online portal www.nj.adoptadrain.org. Sign up, keep your drain clear, track your impact, lead by example. Any, Any comments? I think it's great. I thought it was very good. How do you, wanna, I, how do we distribute this? Uh, we can um, uh, request um, uh, posting it on Facebook page. Yeah. Uh, we could um, ask uh, um, a Franklin reporter and advocate to release it. We can add a picture to it. And um, did is there a Franklin Times coming out? This would be perfect for the Franklin Times. Yeah, I have given up on that one. Walter, didn't you? Yeah. Walter, didn't you, share, yeah. Walter, so didn't you share something recently that? Yeah, yeah. Safi has sent out a request for input. So really? if I'll check that mine and I'll forward it if some if you all of you didn't get it, she may have just probably sent it to me as chair, and I failed to send it to you guys no i got it from you so you i did. think everybody did but oh, okay. who would be the right person to send this to her and maybe she could click on the link and pick up a graphic image or two that would be eye-catching in the franklin times yeah i think this is a perfect thing and if if we get our plastic stuff nailed down we can send that along too i don't know what her publication date is yeah but if, if she did do this, we have yeah. Do we have any comment to the actual text? What I propose because I'm reading for the second time and I would write it differently now. <laughs> Stan, Stan, go ahead. Stan, I got called away for a couple minutes, so I didn't hear the beginning of the conversation. And so I would like to read this over. But my question for you is, um, I don't know if you discussed this in the beginning. But why would this not be something that we would send to the council for them to start a program, asking that they start a program, um, you know, for the whole township? And we could we could propose to them, you know, the words that you have here or, or something like this. Um, I mean, we could start our own. But also invite the, the the township to uh, make it their own, and they could so it do would their be own endorsed. Program. It would be endorsed by the council because essentially there is no action required. Right, and and I think that if we did something like we did um, with the um, plastic bags or the no idling signs by just sending uh, an email to the council saying you know we you know we would you know we would like you to do something like this maybe well you can't really do an ordinance when you're asking for volunteers um i mean i have a storm a storm drain right in front of my house and uh needs to be cleaned and i clean it once in a while but not frequently enough and i would be the first one to sign up for something like this i think it's a great idea um and why not try and get the council behind this mm -hmm. So we would be, uh, what do we ask council to do when we send it to them? I think you're right. Endorse is a good word and promote. Mm -hmm. And Stan, you might consider adding to the language or if you belong to an organization that has a storm drain in front of its building. I mean, think of churches. Mm -hmm. they, um, where it would be a great youth activity. If there's a way to work that into it, we might get a little more traction too. Yeah, I think uh, I think something like the Boy Scouts um, or the Cub Scouts, 
something like well, that. Obviously, obviously they, they would have to be people. They, they would have to be something that would have to be monitored by adults because they're going to be in the street. Um, but there's lots of different groups and, and schools as well, private and public schools. Yeah. Residents, schools. Yeah. And businesses that are the stone in the neighborhood and keep it clear of leaves, trash, and reduce water pollution. You know, maybe something this this takes it in another direction, and you might not get an answer for who knows how long. But how many storm drains are there in Franklin Township? If we can find out from Carl Hauk or somebody. And, and mention it in there that there are, you know, so 20,000 storm drains in Franklin Township. That's interesting. Yeah. That, that could be attention getting. I think that's a good idea, Arnie. This could be a project for the Rutgers prep kids as well. Oh, <laughs> no, that that's not actually because it's it's really about having everyone participating what's in front of your house. Uh -huh. Right, because the Rutgers uh, prep kids they go somewhere to do something, right? So we don't want to tell that somebody else will take care of your drain, mm -hmm. but you take of the care of the drain that is in front of your house. Well, that's if pretty it, much it, the definition. It could be not only in front of your house, but you live on a street where there's 50 houses that there might be there might be 10 drains um, that you might want to adopt the whole street something yeah, like well, that but again so if you it's have it's like the, cleaning up after someone essentially but i mean if as a volunteer there is no limit of course sure but if we find out there there are, are 20,000 drains or 2,000 or whatever it is maybe in that way we can also get a list of where these drains are and then we can have a list that shows these have been adopted and these have not been adopted. So, so th that is part of the website. You log in. I am actually, I didn't investigate the website uh, in the detail, but you, essentially you, you go into the map on the, on the website and you highlight, select the place where is the drain and you put your name on it. And then when you log in on regular basis, you would enter, I cleaned it up at this time, that time. And I think you can even upload images of, of the drain. Wow. Hmm. What so, organization is, is running this? Uh, is that a volunteer organization? Then? It's a, it's a, it's a statewide. It's NJ dot adopt hyphen a hyphen dream dot. Oh. It? ORG ORG. And the first town to do that is Westfield. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Princeton is now, you know, they have their student organization that, that is uh, kind of doing, taking pictures and uh, uh, making updates to the map, but uh, it can be done by uh, residents. I'm looking at the website right now at the very bottom. It looks like it's put together by um, M-Line University in St. Paul, Minnesota. And they all, then they give the email for the Westfield adopt a drain at westfieldnj.gov. Right. So it sounds it's, it's like it's possible. a national program. It's a national, and they develop the site for New Jersey. Wonderful. Wow. Yeah, you probably have one uh, in Minnesota. Mn dot adopt a drain dot org. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Unless somebody registered the site already. Okay, well, so, so I I'm think everybody's here. in favor of going forward with this, you know. So let's let's uh, flow. So over. what what do we vote? Uh, so we move that we uh, send it to council and encourage them to push it. Yeah. Well, I think we want to make sure we have it in final format. The wording. Um, yes, so is is it something that we can agree on or we need some time? I wouldn't I personally would not agree on it without you know just by looking at it the way it is here. I'd have to look at it, but that's just me. I need time to look at something and 
because the over. next meeting will be when? Late um, Arnie, to be fair, he sent this to us last Friday. I, 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 I understand and I haven't looked at it. So uh, that's my bad. Um, so I'm just one person. If everybody votes for it, then that's that's what it is. I think we can continue to update the language if we want, as particularly as we get feedback, but the sooner we get it out there and we promote it through the social media that the township has and the Franklin Times. So can we, can we t take it into two levels? One is that we send it uh, as environmental commission and then we send it later to to the council for their um, um, endorsement. Uh, endorsement. So you're sending it to the environmental commission for a final review. Is that what you're saying? Well, I I thought that we can send it to the media uh, now if we can vote on it, and then refine language and send it uh, next time uh, to vote on it to send it to the council. I, I would abstain from that because I just need time to to review it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I'll make I'll make a motion. Let's see what happens. I move that we. Um, send this as it's currently written to the media outlets for the township, including to Sanfi, I forget her name from the Franklin Sanfee. Times. Sanfee. Mm -hmm. Callum. And that uh, we encourage the Franklin reporter to promote it as well. Mm -hmm. And that um, upon further review, perhaps at our next meeting, we make a formal um, appeal to the township to endorse it. I second. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's been moved and second that we we send the current language to um, the Franklin Time, uh, the Franklin Reporter, and social media. I guess through Bob uh, McQueen. Right. For them to act on it, and there is a website there, and and. Um, then later on, we come back to it and put it in a form and a format to send it to the council asking for their endorsement. Yes, yeah. and who will who will who will send this on to those parties we just mentioned? Well, I can do that. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to <clears throat> resend would, it to everyone. And why why would we be sending it to the media and to all these places, and then after that? put it in a final format and send it to our council. Because you don't want to act on the sending it to council now. I understand that, but I'm saying that if it's not in the perfect format now, you, if it is in the perfect format now, then you could send it to the council. The uh, decision whether it's in uh, perfect format is subject of this vote. Well, I was figuring on bringing it up in my council comments at tomorrow night's meeting, and I can say that a final version will be sent to council for uh, council's endorsement. Because we'd have to cramp the cover. We'd have to cramp the cover letter to the council. We may not want to put that time in tonight. Yeah. I mean, I, I would edit just the very first part of the sentences. I'd put Franklin Township Environmental Commission is asking and yes. do it that way without it. It's like backwards. So Franklin the, the Franklin Township Environmental Commission is asking residents to and it is inviting residents. So the Franklin Township comes first. And yeah. it, it, you take it out of the middle of the sentence. Yeah, yes. and, and you'll go right into, yeah, that way. That's my edit. I think inviting residents instead of asking, that's what yeah. I think Paul said. Mm -hmm. And in, in, in inviting is a better, it's good. Is it's it? Good. Okay, because it used to be inviting. Yes. Stan, when you provide this to Walter, why don't you just go to the Adopt a Drain website and grab one of the images? Mm -hmm. There's some nice clip art there they could use. So when 
the social media or the Franklin Times or the reporter is using it, they could include a graphic. It'll be much mm -hmm. more interesting. I'm looking at the website now, and there's some cute things that that are. There's a logo for adopt a storm drain, that is. Mm -hmm. attractive. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think that would help increase the readability. Stan, can you go back to the beginning of what you have highlighted in yellow there, so I can just quickly read through it, so we can quickly read through it. Let me. Maybe close this. All right, it says the climate change is increasing in the in, in, the incidence of heavy rains. I think the doesn't belong there. Climate change. Take out the word the. Mm -hmm. That's good. Well, one of the words there. Uh, about all of the noxious things that it's delivering to our lakes, rivers, and wetlands, it sounds as if we should be keeping it out of those, perhaps by letting the storm drains be blocked. I, I don't. So, and that's that's that was what I said. That uh, if I wrote it again, I would wrote it maybe differently. Um, which uh, gives and you, uh, and you say here, unfortunately, due to impervious coverage, particularly in urban areas. Well, we we have maybe a maybe a very small urban area. We are mostly rural and suburban, so I don't know why you would. We have good portion of urban area close. We to have an out of how many square miles are we? Forty three square miles or forty six, whatever it is. We have like one street, Hamilton Street, and part of twenty seven that is considered possibly urban. So it's probably ninety five percent urban and I mean rural and suburban. So to focus there, particularly in urban areas, uh, I think. So so um, I said urban and suburban. Because I mean, I don't want to diminish the importance, you know. Well, I don't know that we need to talk about urban and suburban at all. The point I don't think I agree. If uh, we have storm drains in our streets, if to carry away run water running off from impervious surfaces, if these drains are blocked, flooding occurs. Mm -hmm. That's why we want to keep them clear mm -hmm. so that the water is delivered into storm drains. And, and when you say really sickening our communities, I think it's contaminating the waters, our communities. Yes, but the, the, the comment that um, uh, Ted discovered here um, made that Essentially, we are trying to uh, allow the contaminated water to to go through. So it should not sound like that. Well, so maybe I, I would perhaps causing floods. Shall I just delete this one? No, no I don't think you have to delete the whole thing. No. And don't forget the focus is on storm water. It's not sewage or anything else. Yeah, yes, I mean when people course. hear storm water, I, I think storm water runs on surface, taking chemicals, and those chemicals comes from motor vehicles. You don't have to say that. Trash, leaves, and pet excrement. Agrochemicals. It could be um, fertilizer or or salt for well, salting. It comes yeah. from many different sources, many yeah, yeah. non -po non point sources. Um, oh, maybe at the very end, it says the program asks residents to adopt it, and then after the debris, say, can't keep it clear of debris so the stormwater can flow unobstructed, or yeah. that kind of thing. You need to be a little a phrase that says why you're doing this without cutting off the stormwater from getting where it's supposed to go. Hey guys, can I make can I yes. make a comment? Before we go any further, I was just on the website and all the addresses I'm putting in, in in Somerset, it says there are no, we find no drains in this location. 
So I think we <laughs> better make sure the website is functional for our town. But does it uh. mean that that you, when you want to adopt that you actually put it in? It well, it it sure. first yeah. it, it will let you identify drains near you. And I put in the condos right next to me. I put in Appleman Road, and it doesn't find any drains. <laughs> so. Uh. <laughs> Let's let's make sure it works right for us. Maybe okay. you have to register before it'll show you where the drains are. But Stan, I think you want to test drive that website first. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Understood. Good, good so, point, Robin. So let's uh, let's uh, do let's we table want to... this. I move to table. I will I second, second that. So well, there was, was there a motion to approve this first? Yes, yes. I made the motion. Yeah, the, uh, uh, and, and was a there second. a second? If there was a second, then somebody has to. Um, okay. Amend okay. Their... It's just a, by vote of the body. Yeah, we. I I made the motion. Table, I can it. table it. Yeah, we don't yeah. have to vote on that motion. We can just table it. Okay. And I. This is the term. So is that I the general it? consensus? If that's the general consensus, that's what we are. We'll record. Yes, I go. To, I second Robin's motion. Let's take table it. I um, give Stan some time to work on the wording, yeah. picking up what he learned today, and to just really check out the website, make sure we know what we're sending people to. And and Stan, can you re-forward the wording that you have now to everybody? Mm -hmm. Please. Yeah, we we can play with the wording in the meantime. Yeah. Okay, so here is the picture, and I'm going to hit. Everybody, email is here. Okay. Yep. Okay. And uh, I wanted to also talk about the resolution for New Jersey to divest from fossil fuels. Is it okay to talk about it? Um, didn't, did we, I'm sorry, that's different from the, um, what we had uh, discussed that. I yes, guess it is different. Franklin I Council thought that we can. That's, we, that's different. Yeah. Stan, Stan sent you and us all an email about this, Walter, to see if okay. we can get this on the agenda. Okay, all right. I mean, it was uh, some kind of late, but um, um, this this has been circulating uh, into my email box a couple of times, and uh, many uh, townships and environmental commissions they adopt resolution that they support that the state uh, New Jersey state funds they divest from fossil fuels. Um, because our pension funds is invested in dirty coal, oil, and gas companies, which are fueling the climate crisis. This is what we are fighting. And these investments are not only uh, risking our climate, they are increasingly financially, increasingly financially risky. Uh, one of these pensions is the New Jersey State Pension Fund, as I mentioned, that has an estimated 4 billion invested in dirty fossil fuels. This is unacceptable and it must stop. So, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I thought that if we just uh, have a resolution to uh, that we want to voice our opinion to the uh, state that uh, the funds, uh, the retirement funds should be uh, divested from fossil fuels. Stan, and have a, as a suggestion, why don't you and pick somebody on the commission work mm -hmm. on a draft resolution for us to respond to. Mm -hmm. That way we don't write the resolution during the commission meeting. Okay. Okay. Um, I would also make the comment that our, what we're supposed to be doing is making um, suggestions, make recommendations to our Franklin Township Council. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, this is going, this is something that's going to the state. Um, 
So maybe the better way is to propose that to council that they adopt resolution. Well, I, I would say that all, although, you know, I say what I say, but on the other hand, the, um, the um, pension system that Franklin Township is in is part of the state system. Right. Um, so maybe it would be best this, maybe I'm making it too much of this. Maybe it be, should be one resolution to the council and one resolution to the state. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't know. Um, it, it's all the same. It's all the same resolution, but I don't think the council has any say in who the state is um, investing in. Yes, the state, the state can make the you know the council can make recommendations to the state, I guess, and, and, and that um, that would come in the form of resolution, or, I guess. And, and because this the council or the township are participants in that fund, um, they do have a vested interest in it, and I think they do have the opportunity to have a voice, whether it'll get listened to or not. And that might be the way to go would be to make a recommendation to the council for the council to make a recommendation to the state for them to divest themselves of these these companies. Yes. Yeah, I think that would uh, when you say that, you know, the, the system covers the township employees and I guess it's is it more than the employees? Is it the whole township? I'm not sure how. No, teachers too. The teachers. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about the teachers' pension is there? Is that right? Wow. Mm -hmm. We have a uh, it's a movement NJ divest um, among the teachers' um, pension. They're trying to divest. They're trying to do this. Uh, we're trying to yeah. do this also. Yeah. Well, there, 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 there this are is... actually different pots of money. I know that the state employees have one pot of money. Um, the police, I believe, have a separate pot of money for their pension, I think. Um, counties and municipalities might have a separate. When you hear things about how the state is, the, their investments are doing so badly and they owe so mm -hmm. much and they're going to run out of money at some point, I don't believe that's true about municipalities and counties because they have been putting their money in year after year after year, whereas the state has not been putting their money in year after year after year. So there are different pots within the PERS system, I believe. If you go on the on the internet right now and you put in New Jersey municipalities urging state to divest from fossil fuels, there was an article earlier, it was, it was an article in May in the Star Ledger about it. Jersey City was the first to go to the state and say, Correct. The best. So there are quite a few entities out there. Uh, Rutgers, a Rutgers student started one at Rutgers to, so people are filing this already. We mm -hmm. would just be a kind of a me too, but it might be helpful to all of us if we read some of that and saw exactly what, what people are doing. Yeah, so the email that I send out, it has in the, its forwarded section some information from the organization that uh, Maria mentioned and Divest NJ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they started like two years ago. And by the way, uh, one of the leaders in Divest NJ is Tina Weishaus from, um, from Highland Park. And uh, I think uh, the Federation of Teachers of Records is also part of that. Mm -hmm. Same uh, one, yeah. yeah. In, yeah. in Jersey City, the council unanimously passed a resolution to divest. So that's how they worked it. Wow. Tina what? and Barbara. Uh, there's no doubt we it's going to be. We will be a me too, but there's nothing wrong with that. The more Absolutely, the but it kind of helps us know what to say. Yeah. If, we're, if we're following a path that's already been created. I agree. 
Okay, so I can, um, uh, who wants to be in the committee? I can uh, make a committee for, to make the resolution and the next time we can uh, bring it uh, uh, to the meeting and to have it uh, moved for, having voted for. Is, is this how we want to handle it? Stan, if you write the resolution, I'd be happy to take a look at it and provide input. Okay, cool. Good. I think what I plan to do, I will pick up the one from Jersey City and uh, we'll take it from there. Good idea. Good. Don't reinvent the wheel. Nope. <laughs> we don't have time. Wonderful. Uh -huh. My goodness. Okay. Okay, and, and by the way, Stan, you know, the adopter drain program, we've been looking at ways to involve the residents, you know, I'll call it on their streets, at their homes, or in the community. And mm -hmm. that's one of the first projects that we've had in a long time to do that. So, yeah, exactly. That was my thinking because, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so, let me test, uh, test the, the website okay. that uh, it's um, uh, user friendly or engaged resident friendly. Um, and I'll report next month. Ted, would you know of a way that we can find out whether it's through Carl Houck or somebody else, um, how many storm drains we have in Franklin Township and maybe even get some kind of map as to where they are, how many are on each street, something like that? Arnie, before you even do that, go look at the website because the, that's the idea. It does already show where the storm drains are if it's okay. working. If you go into Westfield, which of course that one is really Westfield driven, it already populates streets um, and tells you if there's a storm drain in your area. They, I didn't see gross numbers like you're talking about, which would still be very interesting, but if it's working right, it should tell you what storm drains are in your area. That's the way it looks to me, but maybe Stan yeah, can it's, it's, so it probably shows that when somebody from the municipality has put that information in, and that would be why it doesn't yet show any for us. It probably shows only those that are maintained, that somebody adopted. Oh, well, again, well, that's why I'm well, asking, uh, based on what Ted said, um, you know, is there a way to find out so that we could so that information could be put in if it needs to be put in um, so that people would know where they are. Yeah, I think we need I to think... communicate it clearly whether uh, yeah. it needs to be entered or whether it's already there. I think, Stan, you need to find that out from the organization, how that works. Because mm -hmm. okay. the website looks like, oh, I'm considering adopting a drain. I put in my address and it's supposed to show me the drains near me. But it shows nothing in Levitt. It shows nothing in the condos, the countryside. So it may be that the township has to download information for it works. Mm -hmm. It looks like that's the case because when I'm looking at Westfield, it says this this uh, drain is adaptable. So somebody had to um, upload it, and I think that. Uh, Princeton is actually working on exactly that. Because I don't see them entered yet, but this is what's coming from Princeton. If Princeton's working on it, I can get a hold of the president of the environmental of the town council and find out. With uh, Sandy? No, uh, uh, Dave oh, Cohn. Tammy? Oh, okay. Dave Cohn. Dave Cohn, okay. Yeah, I know that the Capers students they they have it on on their agenda. Yeah. Yeah, they don't have anything yet. Very good. Okay, if we So I'm sorry. Um Stan, will you just sort of uh for everybody uh, outline what 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 we're going to be doing going forward, and um, so we can all be on one page here. So I will learn more about the program, uh, whether it is uh, ready to go or, or whether we need to 
have the township to upload uh, the information on available drains. Okay. All right. Very good. I think it's a great idea, Stan. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. If we go back to the agenda, we've talked about the adopt a drain program, and it, you've already talked okay. about the Rutgers prep. Uh, you know, students on the towpath. So we go into um, some of the old business update. Um, storm water basin retrofit program. We've talked about that recently. Sustainable Jersey. Uh, is there anything new there? Uh, Want to share, uh, Ted? No. Okay. And um, talked about the environmental stewardship program. We have a an individual, and we have, I'll call it an industry or business that we are considering and Paul has agreed to to move forward with procuring those uh, those plaques. Is You're right. right. Yeah. Well, you just contradicted yeah. yourself there. You said that we are considering these two groups and Paul yeah. is going to do the plaques. But if no. we're just considering them, <laughs> no, why would he be doing the plaques? We haven't yeah. final I don't I think, think we, we finalized should. anything unless yeah. unless yeah. we want to do that. Yeah. Normally, we do in the fall. Yeah, I mean, we're in June now, so we've got time to make these decisions. I, I'll, I'll get a hold of. I promised I would get a hold of Diane, and I will. Why would well, you get hold of Diane? Just to have the information available. She has the information of where we're oh, doing about the plaques. plaques. The plaques okay. themselves. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I believe it's Blue Ribbon on uh, off of uh, World is it Cedar Grove or World's Fair Drive. I think it's off of World's Fair Drive, Blue uh -huh. Ribbon. Okay. All right. But while we're here, now are we saying that we have not finalized the two candidates at this point? Or I thought at the last meeting, maybe it wasn't formal. Maybe we should formalize it now that these are going to be the two. Um, they're not. They they they've been chosen to be our our winners, if you want to call it that. They're not applicants. They've been nominated to be our okay. winners, and we've got months to go before. But now, yeah. I, I would suggest waiting until say the first meeting in September, which yeah. means there'll be plenty of time to get blacks made, just in case something else comes up that we think is more deserving. All right. Yeah. Probably. I agree. I agree. You know, and uh, possibly in the. And by the way, uh, the last uh, public works meeting, the manager said that he wants to put up solar cells over municipal parking lots where the police vehicles are parked and the policeman's own vehicles are parked at the back of of the. Wow. Police building. So. <laughs> where more of this is being done. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Um, all right, if we continue here, let me, uh, just one second here. Okay. We could okay. just open it and say, does anyone have an update? And if not, then we open to the public. Yep. I'll second that. Okay. It's been moving in a second that uh, we, if nobody has any updates on the old business, then we open to the public in a second. Well, I second. gave you an yeah. update on H there, sustainability officer. And oh. say the, the resolution refers to sustainability consulting services. So it's getting pretty close to sustainability officer. And okay. the, mm -hmm. the, oh, and this could come under sustainable Jersey. I should have brought this up uh, last week. There was a uh, Somerset County sustainable Jersey hub meeting at which David Coes of Hillsborough was, was basically their business advocate, which is what uh, Vince Dominic is here. But he's also their sustainability officer. And I have notes somewhere which I could send to everybody on what he said. It's not very extensive, 
And in fact, I could, when it gets to a point of making, really asking council to create such a position, I could get more information again. If I knew how and also, I also Ted, the man from um, Madison, Gray, whatever his last name is, I've already sent everybody his contact Montclair. information. Montclair, yeah. We have his information on his job description, et cetera. Yeah. So. All right. Good, good. All right. If there there are no other updates, then uh, there's been a second. Uh, all in favor of opening the meeting to the public, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, open the meeting to the public. Okay, then the Franklin reporter. I'm, good. I'm good, thanks very much. Thank you for staying with us tonight. I move to close the public session. Second. We move the second that we close the meeting to the public. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, we're back in main session. Um, Motion to adjourn. Second. Second.